Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I guess you're here to build your hibiki. If you haven't figured it out for yourself yet, that is. All right, a few things before we get started. Get comfortable, maybe grab a drink, maybe a, a tea, maybe a wine, maybe even some music, whatever you need to do to relax. Yeah, maybe even light a candle like Kate's doing here. Mini melts too, in stock and available via the website. If you've not built a, a keyboard before, maybe the hibiki is your first keyboard. Relax, you can do this. I believe in you. All right, here we have the kit that Hibiki comes in. It's a custom case, custom molding to se secure the Hibiki in nice and snug. You'll see a few accessories up the top, uh, pour on pad, PCB, custom screwdriver, which every Hibiki comes with. That comes with both uh, screw heads. So now you'll notice uh, you'll notice a Wilbertech PCB tucked up the back. Pull it out. You won't need it yet. Okay. So first step, take everything out of the bag. And just a quick note: if you don't have stabilizers, keycaps, and switches, it's probably worth pausing the video and sorting that out before proceeding. So today we're building an office beige. You'll notice that there is a peelable film. Uh, a lot of lot of talk around peelable film at the moment. This is what peelable film is, for those wondering. Uh, here we have the feet. Good place to start, Kate. You'll notice these are custom feet that say, don't worry, be hibby. A little nod to one of our favorite, uh, one of our favorite classics. Alrighty, another thing to note here, we left the peelable film, the famous peelable film, down on the desk. It just adds a little bit of protection when you're building it. Naturally, polycarbonate is a soft material and it will scuff over time, but we do our best. Mm. Four feet, perfectly put on, but you're not done yet, as you might be able to tell. Again, you've waited a year for this keyboard, so you don't want to rush the process. Just enjoy yourself, take your time. You'll notice that the uh, the case is pre-assembled. It's not fully tightened from factory. Eight screws there. Uh, you can use it screwdriver you can use the screw heads we supplied with the screwdriver you can use your favorite electric screwdriver look it doesn't really matter uh, look a little bit more product placement it'd be holidays tray people wondering what you use it for screws what else now you'll notice that Kate here has some tweezers to pick the screws out. She'll use those tweezers quite a bit throughout. Probably handy to have if you've got them. We like, uh, we like the tweezers because it helps extract out screws and little bits and bobs that are quite small. Kate also has famously long talons which make it a little bit tricky to you know, grab at screw heads and whatever else. Amazing. What have we got here Kate? I was expecting a little pop-up, but it didn't happen. That's a plate. Okay, and we've got the Wilbertech PCB, office beige. Each Hibiki comes with a kind of color matched or complementing color. Now, stabilizers. Stabilizers? Stabilizers. Of course, this is a hot swap PCB because we do not have time to be soldering. All right, so stabilizers are the first thing. They don't come in the Hibiki kit. Stabies are good. I think we're using them here. Awesome gator runs, whatever your preference is. Figure it out for yourself. Three to four, depending on your layout. First thing you're gonna do is uh, obviously lube the stabilizers because no one likes a rattly space bar. We didn't show you that because you know you guys are adults and, and know what to do here. All right, so you're gonna be screwing the screws of the stabilizers to the PCB. You might wanna undo the daughter board uh, that just pops out. And you might notice if you have hawk eyes that Kate has switched to an electric screwdriver or driver. It's a little bit easier when you're kind of messing around with these little screws. There you go, there, there's nails actually possibly coming in handy for once. And of course, you'll see the mini melts in the corner, adding some nice ambience to the to the build and that hippie holidays tray just coming in, in handy. What an absolute godsend. Off comes the daughter board. It's now daughterless, or it's an orphan daughter board, I guess. All right, this is a pretty quick process uh, if you've done it before, if you haven't. Don't stress, uh, but yeah, definitely lube those stabs. I'll say it one more time for the people up the back. Lube your stabs. What's next? Standoffs. 
Okay, what are standoffs? Other than kind of sounding aggressive, ah, there's the tray again, so handy. So, so thankful that we have that here. Okay, so the standoffs are effectively spaces. It just adds a bit of distance between the plate and the PCB. So you just kind of like hold it on one side, screw it in from the other. Again, electronic screwdriver or electric screwdriver is a little bit easier just to kind of get it done quickly rather than sort of going old school. Get rid of those tweezers, makes it easier to play. This is a little bit of a tricky thing to do, so the tweezers are, are valid here. There's a, there's a few to do, I think there's like six. If you want to count, you can. Tell you what, that office beige PCB to match looks great though. That's like, this is a custom thing. Most people don't, you know, go to that level of detail, but Wilbur and Kate do. Beautiful, done. Just kidding, just kidding. There's a little bit more to do here, but not that much. Pour on. This is the plate phone. This is, uh, this is pretty cool actually. Follow the instructions, stick carefully. Here we go, line it up, see where it's gonna go, see how it looks. Looks pretty cool. Happy with that, Kate? No, not yet. A little bit more fiddling to do. There we go. Getting there. Fantastic. Here we go. This is the sort of final piece of the PCB sandwich, as I like to call it, or assembly. Uh, most adults call it. But uh, it's looking good. It's, it's, it's looking fantastic and I hope you're doing okay. I hope, you know, we're sort of a third through the build process here. You can always skip back, you can always replay things. What did I tell you at the start? It's not that bad, it's not that complicated. You've got this, hang in there. There we go, delicious. What a delicious looking PCB sandwich. What could be next though? Ah, more on pads. This is a bit of a controversial one. Now, we stick it directly to the plate. Some people stick it to the case or to the base, whatever. You're insane, you're absolute lunatics. Stick it to the plate, it's how it's been designed. Now, measure once, measure twice, and then stick it, right? Line it up, you don't wanna put it in the wrong place. There's no extra pour on pads in your kit. So don't, you know, don't mess around too much. This is one of the more kind of time consuming parts of the of the build. Obviously lubing your stabs is a bit, a bit of a fiddly mess. Obviously switches if you lube them yourself or if, you know, and surely you're lubing them yourself or buying factory, factory lube switches. But this is oddly kind of time consuming. Loving these tweezers though, absolute precision. Kate does not mess around when it comes to precision builds. Alrighty, nearly there, that's okay. It, it's not a, don't rush the process, enjoy it. You know, I, I'd love to know what music you're playing whilst you're doing this build to kind of drown out this, uh, this commentary. Let me know in the comments. You can also let me know what keycaps and, and switches you're putting on this bad boy. Alrighty, so Office Beige is named after you know, old office equipment. Whilst Kate has a tea break, I'll, I'll give you the origin story. Old office equipment that's kind of yellowed, printers, you know, Macs, Apple computers, that sort of thing, scanners, faxes. It's that kind of faded beige color that everything seemed to come in. All right, another, another cup of tea there, ready to go. Now it is time to put the switches in. Obviously this is a Wilbertech hot swap PCB, extra hot, but it makes putting the switches in super easy. These are green jackets for obvious reasons. If it's not obvious enough, it's because they're green. Uh, a few tips for putting in the switches. Don't bend them when you put them in, basically. Just keep them nice and straight, press them in, make sure they're nice and firm, exactly how Kate's doing. I always like to buy an extra sort of like 10, 15% of switches, just in case, you know. Maybe get like 70, 75, 100. It's just always handy to have some good switches laying around. So have them handy. There's usually a few duds in the match. It happens, don't stress out about it. Just have some extra handy. They're not that expensive. Kate did that really quickly, I'm impressed. Here we go, look at that. Stunning, stunning. Quick tea break, it's thirsty work, honestly. It is absolutely, it's honest work, but it's thirsty work. 
Alrighty. Remember that lovely polycarbonate base? Well, guess what? It's time to screw the daughter board to the case. It's really simple. There's four screws, line her up, put her in, and uh, off you go. Now, uh, there's, there's a little bit of a technique to kind of folding the daughter board cable down after it's been plugged into the PCB. You'll see how Kate kind of delicate, delicately does it. So just keep an eye out for that. It's just like a little tuck. It's not anything crazy and uh, don't be scared by it. But if you want it to kind of look good from the underside when you're showing your friends who missed out on a, on a Hibiki, you want to have a tidy kind of daughter board cable. This is my favorite part of the build though, reuniting the daughter board with the father board. Now, you'll notice that Kate has rotated the case bottom away from her as she lines it up into the grandfather board, into the Wilbertech PCB there. Look at that. We're just gonna exaggerate this for a second. Slides in. There we go. You can do this, Kate, come on. Maybe get those tweezers. No, no tweezers. Here we go. Yep, it's in. Notice that little jump cut, took a minute. Okay, so Kate's folding it down. There's a little, little kind of air spend in it. Just do that if you can. If not, not a huge deal. Jeez, you can already see the flex kind of coming through. Oh, and those green jackets look really cool, kind of. They contrast the, the beige PCB nicely. And yeah, it's a, it's a nice little choice, Kate. Okay, and on goes the top. Obviously the logo points towards the, uh, the USB port. Ah, I gotta love your little film. Okay, now it's just time to, si to simply screw in those case screws, all eight of them. Now, this is an important step, probably the most important step that, uh, that we have. Watch very closely how Kate kind of screws in diagonally from the corners first, not all the way, but from the corners. There we go. So she's gonna come back for a second pass once they've all been tightened, sort of like 80%. Now, I told you at the start, this is a relaxing process. Relax, don't go crazy, don't over tighten, do not over talk these, these fellas. Look at that, see, second pass. All night, nice and, you know, snug and tight, but not too tight. Here we go, flipped it around. We're doing GMK Soyan, which was one of the first ever Hibby keycap collaborations. There it is, looks cool, huh? Wow, just like that, magic. I mean, it looks pretty good, let's be honest. That looks really good. It looks amazing. But how does it sound? Well, we'll link up a typing video. I mean, you know how it sounds, that's why you bought it. Tap, 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 sounds great. Here we go. Oh wow, this is some of the best typing I've ever heard. Now, these are already loaded into VIA, so you can just hop on the website, plug it in, choose your layout, test your switches. Probably test your switches before you put your keycaps on. It wasn't shown here. I think that's just Kate doing it out of habit every time. But definitely test your switches before you assemble everything and before you put your keycaps on. Because if you have to swap it out, it's a bit of a pain after. 